Mika Almog, shalom. Shalom, shalom. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you. It's great to be on Culture Buzz. Our pleasure. Mika, there is something very interesting that you are holding in your hands. Ah, what could that be? What, what could it be? <laughs> uh, this is uh, Musafa Haaretz. It's uh, the uh, weekly, the weekend magazine of Haaretz newspaper. And in it is a satire column called Bona Bona. Wow. And this is a satire column that I am part of. I'm an editor and one of the writers for the satire column. And rumor has it that not only that this is uh, some kind of a first and very unique in Israel, but also <laughs> beyond. Well, uh, as far as I know, and I hope that I've done, you know, uh, for a fairly... Uh, thorough research, although I might have missed a few places in the world. I think what we're doing is fairly unique because this is a, a weekly satire column that deals with everything that's going on in Israel and also things that are going on in the world. Uh, but one of the things that make us unique is that we are a, an all-female writing staff. Women power. Uh, women power, girl power. Yeah. And uh, although the, uh, uh, the satire column is hardly, uh, you know, we don't limit ourselves to dealing only with what would be considered uh, women's issues, there's a female twist to the column on a regular basis, both in, in, uh, in you know, regular uh, uh, parts of the column that, you know, I can show you in a bit, and also, you know, the way we look at things. Both female twist and women touch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> both. And a lot of intuition as well. For which we are grateful. Yes. We, I mean men. <laughs> as you well should be. Yeah. As you well should be. So when did it start? Uh, this started almost a year ago. Uh -huh. uh, along with... Uh, Haaretz magazine changed format and became more of a magazine format. And all sorts of, uh, of uh, parts of its content were refreshed. And that's when we came uh, on board. Mm -hmm. And the uh, character of the editor... At yes. the bottom is uh, t totally, <laughs> totally fictional, fiction. Completely fictional. It's, basically, it's you. Yes, yes. Born in uh, in my crazy imagination. So, so uh, we have a few things that repeat every week, and one of the things is the editor's note. Uh, so, according to the fictional world of Bona Bona, of our satirical column, uh, we have this male editor who's the only you know man around, and he peeks into the room every week. And he says, how's it going? Will I get my column this week? Girls, he always calls us girls. And then he always has something to say. So it's, uh, it's a character that I have a lot of fun with because he thinks that he's very evolved and aware and possibly even a feminist. But, you know, he always screws up. Like the week that uh, uh, Marissa Meyer got uh, uh, the position, uh, you know, when she became head of Yahoo, Uh, he poked in his head and he said, what about that, girls? You know, I'm totally into that. I hire girls who are pregnant all the time. And, hey, when are you having your baby? <laughs> and, oh, you're not yeah. pregnant? Okay, never mind. <laughs> so these are the kind of things that he, uh, that he does all the time. He thinks he's progressive. He thinks he understands. Um, and, and, in fact, he, he doesn't. You know, the, the, the women are girls and so on. And it's all done, of course, humoristically. But I think he's an interesting character. Uh, to reflect uh, often the types of people who you run into in a work environment. Uh, and it's certainly true for comedy. Well, it's quite apparent, and I can say it as an avid reader of this uh, mm -hmm. Bona Bona <laughs> section, is maybe it's a bit scary uh, how easy it is for you mm -hmm. to read the minds of male chauvinists. <laughs> and, I, and I can go on, but I will stop here. <laughs> yes. uh, but... It's truly both amazing and inspiring, if I may say so myself. Thank you very much. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, after reading uh, almost all the, col all the columns of Bona Bona, mm -hmm. it has to do with your uh, lines. Do you ever draw a line? Is there one or more sacred cow or taboos mm -hmm. that you will avoid? Um... I don't think that there are, are, are topics that are taboo or are wrong to deal with or even wrong to joke about. I think it's always a question of, of the angle. I think you can talk about, you know, the most horrible things in comedy. You can talk about the Holocaust. You can talk about child molestation. But you have to always know, especially in satire, who you're pointing the finger at and what it is that you want to say. 
and where exactly are you positioned and when you know we often I'll tell you what doesn't since I'm also one of the editors of, of, uh, of the column I will often get jokes that I think are hysterically funny but I always ask myself you know if when you peel away the humor what's the statement behind it and this is especially true when it comes to, to issues that are sensitive uh, and you know there have been times when I've made a judgment call to, to put in a a punchline that had to do with something sensitive and we got letters about it um, but I try to be very clear I can always I can always defend it if I feel like I know uh, where my finger is pointed and if I feel that my cause is justified I wouldn't you know use a sensitive issue just to get a laugh that I think is is uh, is something wrong um, but you know we also we had um, this actually specific issue that I'm holding uh, we had one segment that was called uh, a, a nipple for Shabbat or a nipple for the weekend and as you can see it right here and what we had is every week we had a picture of a male nipple and the details of the owner of said male nipple uh, and it just you know it was the name and his profession and what his hobbies are and so on and you know the point of it was that we were uh, uh, objectifying uh, male chest in the same way that female but, but chests are objectified on a regular basis. This is the proud reply to the Sun, the British Sun page two. <laughs> yes, what even less to than be? that. You what know, used even, to be? You know, there's, there's this is a very popular Israeli men's magazine, and they have uh, uh, models posing. And I don't think, you know, models are victims or anything like that. But in the texts that they write about them, they call them it. You know, when did it start? When, where did it come from? You know, it says, when did it start? And it's the year of the model's birth, and where did it come from? And so, you know, we went for an objectification of, of, uh, of, uh, of a male chest in response to this and people couldn't take it. We got, you know, letters and people hated it and it was finally, you know, there was so much objection. Mostly men. Yeah, you know, but people wrote this is inappropriate for Ha'alitz magazine and they found it offensive and I bring this as an example because I thought it was a really interesting dynamic where we were going for something that I still can clearly defend and people just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And so this this was actually our final one and we said, well, we understood that it was considered uh, uh, inappropriate uh, and so we are now retiring the nipple for Shabbat. Uh, as of next week, testicle for Shabbat, <laughs> which we didn't do, of course. Uh, so this is a, an example uh, of uh, self-imposed censorship. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, when, when we, we have a certain dynamic with the readers and we have a certain dynamic with the people who edit the magazine as a whole, and so we chose to be respectful, but I thought it was a really interesting uh, example, and it was something that made a little noise, and when you make a little noise, you're probably affecting something. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, you have touched a nerve. Yes, exactly. Let's talk, in your permission, Mika, about the name. Bona sure. Bona. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Well, credit to, for the name Bona Bona must go to a man, <laughs> to my husband. Uh, we looked for different uh, uh, names for, for quite a while when we were about to launch it. And uh, Bona Bona in Hebrew has a double meaning. Uh, in, in One meaning is Bona Bona Habanot, which is the, the uh, uh, female way of saying come here. A famous song by Chava Alberstein? Yes. Yes. Bona, 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 uh, where it says bona bona, I mean, where the word bona is actually a melding of the word bo and the word henna. Bo henna became bona, and bona means, you know, come here, I'm going to kick your ass. So yeah. the, uh, yeah. the name ended up being a combination of something that had uh, the association of, of women and loveliness and a certain softness to it, and something that had the association of an ass kicking. Mm -hmm. So... That was the connection. Between. Sounds very appropriate. <laughs> if yeah. I may say so. We try, we try to do both every week to the yeah. best of our ability. How difficult it is to produce on a weekly basis mm -hmm. something that is so creative, mm -hmm. so bold. Yeah. How demanding is it? It's very demanding. Um, 
I, you know, I, I've also uh, uh, written for a lot of, uh, of TV comedy shows, and comedy in general is very, very hard to write. It's interesting that I think audiences are a lot less forgiving to, towards bad comedy than they are towards bad drama in many ways. People get angry when they expect to be made to laugh and they find something not funny, they get very, very upset. Mm -hmm. So uh, the ratio in writing comedy is very, very high. I would say that in order to produce a funny joke, a ratio meaning you know you, you probably need to write at least five, if not ten, one-liners in order to find one that's good. Uh -huh. These are the proportions. Wow. And so, for, for example, for this uh, uh, double spread, we have a total of seven writers uh, who write for it. We don't have all seven every single week, but we have between five and seven writers writing for it every single week. And uh, what we do is that we start at the beginning of, well, we follow what's going on in Israel and the world all the time. We make a list of topics, and then we start writing for them. And then we have a big uh, staff meeting, big, <laughs> we have a staff meeting. Since we're women, there's always brunch involved, uh, and we eat delicious things and drink a lot of coffee. And then we figure out how can we take these issues that are being discussed right now, and how can we break them down into comedy structures. So, for example, you know, again, going back to this random issue that I happen to be holding, this was the week before Israel went into Gaza. This was uh, uh, right before that. And so we, we, we approached it in many, many ways. We did an item about preparing your, your shelter, but we also provided a, uh, a ruler for personal use, which was intended for uh, uh, Netanyahu and Barak at the time. And it invited them to use this ruler in whatever way they saw it to appropriate in order to decide whether they really need to attack or maybe they can just feel appeased in different ways. When you say ruler, you uh, imply something about morality? <laughs> I imply something about measurements. Okay. <laughs> and this also had to do with, you know, wanting to bomb in Iran. And so the final, the longest, the end of the ruler says, wow, that's impressive, no need to bomb Iran. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's what we do, we break things down into various items and then we start uh, uh, writing. And as uh -huh. I said, we probably write at least five times the material that we actually need in order to reach uh, uh, a weekly column. Mm -hmm. Sounds like uh, a tough job, but uh, very rewarding, yeah. at least uh, for us, the readers. I'm, I'm very glad to hear it, thank you. What can we wish Bona Bona for the future? It's interesting because uh, the wish for Bona Bona is kind of... Uh, uh, you know, is opposite to what I would like to wish for Israel, because for Bona Bona you need a lot of things to be happening all the time, and that's usually not good news for a yeah. country. Yeah, mixed um, feelings. But, you know, things are probably continuing to be pretty intense in Israel regardless of Bona Bona, so mm -hmm. we'll just hope to make the most of it and, uh, and get a laugh. Yeah, it will make it easier for us. Mika, we thank you very much. Thank you. Very I much. wish you all the best, and... Uh, Thank keep, you. keep up the good work. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks Toda a lot. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.